everyone, what is up? It's Kieran the Barber here today. We're going to be doing another hair tutorial video. This time, we're going to be doing a bit of a football season because it's just started out. We're going to be doing that, how to get the Olivia Giroud look. Um, and on that basis, I'm going to be doing not necessarily a skin fade, more of a one back and sides, maybe a half around the bottom, just to taper that off nicely. And then we're going to disconnect mainly both the sides. The top is going to become very choppy, very texturized to give it a nice textured look. For that, I'm going to be using my Andis um, US Pro Cordless LIs, my Slimlen Pro LIs. I'm going to be using the full shavers just for the tape. Um, and then to finish, I've got some awesome products on show. I'm going to be sure I'm going to be using a bit of texture spray, massage it into the roots. I'm going to show you how to do that. A little bit of uh, Wildcat hair clay mess that up, give it that texture, a bit of spray to finish and then afterwards if you flick over to the Johnny's Chop Shop channel itself, uh, my model Jay will be showing you how to do his own hair, a bit of a DIY um, Johnny's Chop Shop, how to get the Olivia Giroud look. Brilliant, I hope you enjoyed my video, if you do give me a like, give me a follow, subscribe, tell me what I could have done better, tell me what I could have done worse, thank you for watching guys. Right guys, welcome to my head tutorial video on how to get the Olivia Giroud look. Now as you can see Jay's hair is probably about a number 4 to a number 5 at the minute. So I'm just going to wet that down. Now you might ask me, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, my water is clearly blue. I like to use hair tonics in my water. I don't know how many other people use hair tonics in their water, but if you, um, if you do it's really good for when i.e. people come in with hair waxes or hair gels or stuff like that and what that does is it just breaks down the um, breaks down the product quite well so I just want to say a massive shout out to Fab Hair Tonics just for um, showing me the way with hair tonics and how much easier it is to get through the hair and how much ni how nice does that smell by the way Jay? Yeah it smells well. What flavor is that? Manly. Manly. Manly flavour. <laughs> so, some people like to cut dry with clippers. Um, it depends what kind of clipper I'm using. Now, I'm going to be using my cordless US Pro Ally with the number two magnetic attachment to it. I don't know if any of you have used magnetics before. Just give you a little quick demo there. Boom, it's on. Doesn't trip off no matter how hard you push it on the skin. I mean, you can see that's left marks. That isn't falling off, that's not coming off. Okay, um, and now some people will disagree that you can't cut wet hair with clippers, which you can, because this isn't magnetic, this is a rotary motor. A rotary motor will get through wet hair and dry hair. So I'm gonna take the number two, just the occipital bone. Because what I want to do is, before anything, I want to get rid of bulk. And as you can see, as I'm coming up, I'm using my comb as another guard. I'm rubbing my guard on my guard. So I don't want to take it any higher than the opposite of bone. So I'll leave that there. When I come up, follow my comb round. All it does is, as I've come out at more of a, an angle, that then automatically naturally wants me to flick out. Instead of having to come up and in, well, naturally want to take off more hair. I give myself a safety guard, and I flick out. Always follow the natural hair pattern. Jay has a bit of a nape swell around the neck, as you can see. His hair doesn't flurry straight down. His hair pushes to the side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from this side and I'm going to come towards the hair. So I'm coming from sideburn down and around. 
we'll come up to temple, just come across to the ear, and then just drop ever so slightly to where my line lays. As you can see, I'm just as I'm coming to the temple, I'm just waving that out. And that motion there. You've got two fingers here, my thumb, and two fingers that motion there. So you just like, there's no grabbing it, you're using your whole arm, you don't need to use any of your arms. It's more of a respect. So I'm just using four, four or five, possibly five. I'm still flicking out. So you can see as I've come around from the temple onto the ear, and I've dropped down just around that occipital bone. So I've not come straight across, I've not followed that. Come to the temple, come to the ear, dip down and around. I'm going to follow exactly the same one on the other side. So I've done number two all the way around now. Now I want to clip over comb. I've got two different combs. So I've got my black andis comb and my white andis comb. Now there's a reason for this. I mean it's a reason I go over quite a lot. Just because it makes your job a whole lot life easier. So if I first of all go to put my black comb in there. The hair is not as visible as I'd like it to be. Yeah, I can still see it, but it's nowhere near as visible as I'd like it to be. Now if I use my white and this clipper comb, bang. You can see every single hair in that clipper comb. But if I use my white comb, say on, on grey hair or blonde hair, the hair would be a lot less visible as it was opposed to the black. So, on Jay's hair today, we're going to be using the white and this clipper comb. I want to come up at a 90 degree angle because I want to keep a lot of this crown for a more, a lot of texture through the back. So I lift it up, 90 degree angle. I see so many barbers, um, not, not that I'm, I'm hating or, or not, I'm, I'm just, it's just an observation that they take the crowns very high and they leave from this point of the crown um, long, so the hair falls over it, which might be fashionable from, from where you are or whatever, but when I see it over here um, in, in the UK, it just, it's horrible. And the reason being I say it's horrible is because it takes my customer another three months to grow that out. And that's why I don't ever cut anyone's crown off. Now again from this side, I want to keep all of this disconnected. I'm just going to flurry that over. And then I want to grab the triangle. you can see right now already that is really starting to blend in nicely and you, you can see the complete disconnection from this hair here and this hair here that's what gives it the distinction that's what gives it that complete different look from anything else
So before I go into my number one round here, which will start to actually define the haircut and make it look really nice and sharp, I'm gonna repeat on this side. On. So again, my clipper comb is gonna be using this as a guard. I have now my number one magnetic grade on. Three mil. Very slowly bring that up. See, the thing is, if I was to go in with a number one straight away instead of a number two and I was more of a novice barber because the hair was quite heavy here before I blended it in that would hang over and it would be a lot harder to see where you're blending and it would confuse you slightly so hence why I do the number two I blend that in and then I start with my number one if you make everything simple and everything a lot clearer then you're going to get to the journey and the path you want a lot quicker I was having a chat with Jay earlier before we started. Um, Jay's really excited today because not only is he handsomely good looking, but he's also just brought out a clothing range, um, which to be fair is really, really awesome. It's called Mask, M-A-S-Q-U-E. Um, so go give them a follow on Instagram, Facebook, check out their Jay, what's your, what's your website to, to buy your what's your apparel? www.maskmenswear.com There we go, simple as that. Go check them out, go take a look. Some good stuff on them. It's number number one. Again, just, just below the temple. See, I'm just still using my, my finger and my thumb. Come across and just do that more kind of motion. I'm not jaunting it with, I would say, my elbow, I'm not coming up and doing that. Literally, it's all in the wrist. So now we have a line from here, come around and down. I want to go from, if you look at my lever here, I want to go from a one to one and a half. Simple as that. And just this very line here. And just a flick, just on that line. I'm not going really that high, probably a couple of centimetres. Just to start blending that, that in together. And then I'm going to come up and down and around in a half. And then a zero. It's just I just got a little bit of hair just there. So I just want to bring my white comb up. I just want to go over it and make sure it's perfect. And 
and you repeat this motion around the whole head. So I'm going to come back around and do all this now. Alright, so let's focus there. Okay, so now we're getting to Jay's hair where we're going to put the half grade round and just flick up. Now, usually I would use a half in the sense of I would just pull the clipper up and use a half. But again, Anderson have brought out this really cool thing which is a zero magnetic guard which is a 1.5mm so it's a half grade essentially that clicks on and when you drop the lever to its lowest point where it would effectively be a zero this grade then turns into a half now what's brilliant about this grade is because it's a half and when you pull this lever up it has a distinction between a one and a half so people who struggle to blend in halves or zeros they can use this clipper grade to then blend that out into the one. I'll show you. So I start off on my zero. So I'll start off on my zero. On my half even, sorry. Yeah, it's a zero grade. Okay, and regardless of what number you're using, you still have to follow that hair pattern. So I'm come up and around and up. And then it just gets just below the occipital bone. I'll flick that out. Again on this side here. It pushes that way out. Then come that way, and I'll just flip up. It's not taking off a hell of a lot, but it's taking off more than enough to get that nice crisp fade in what I want at the very bottom. Then I flick it. So coming down, I can flip that up, just like that. And then around here, just use that motion just to get rid of any unwanted hairs. And maybe lurking, just to blend that in nice and softly. I'm going to show you a really good technique in a, in a bit with beards. So, <laughs> hello. So again, half grade, the lowest point. Pulling my hair up and around. Just on the four or five there. And flick it up to um, in between half and a one. And just get rid of any lineage that is in there. Let it work this magic. You don't need to go too fast. You should just pick everything up nice and slowly. Give you that perfect fade. I 
I don't know if you can see on camera now, because obviously I'm not watching the camera, I'm watching the haircut. But I can see now that that's slowly, slowly coming out. There you go, that's a nice little bit of fade in there. And the thing is, the fade looks good, but when you edge everything up and you edge the beard and you edge the neck guard, it just makes that fade then look so much sharper. So I'm going to finish up on this side, I'll get back to you. So now I'm going to be using my T outliners. Um, no converter on them, these have a British plug. Um, to be honest, I haven't even used them yet. They're brand new, they're just out of the box. Um, and you can obviously clearly see that they haven't been used. Um, so your guess is as good as mine of how good they're going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edge Jay up, sharpen the measures, do his beard. I'm trying to be quite soft with, with Jay because he's got quite sensitive skin. I've known that sort of from cutting his hair for quite a long time. I don't know how powerful these, these bad boys are. I mean, you can see the detail on that already. What then we're going to do is line up his, his beard and just come round. So I bring him down like this instead of. Some people can do this. I mean, I do that sometimes. I prefer if I'm getting a more detailed straight line, especially in a short stubble. So rub it across the skin and come down. Here, I want to come down dead straight. And turn this round. Okay. Okay. That corner looks poking out the sides. The thing I love about these clippers is the trimmers. Sorry, you um, you know you've got them in your hand. They're, they're so powerful. So everyone obviously got a magnetic motorist that only trim up. Well, it has a magnetic motor, funnily enough. Hence why this can't cut really through wet hair. It can cut through dry hair, and might only cut through dry hair nice. Nice and sharp. Do you see all these little bits here? I want to sharpen them up. So when I'm when I'm in the shop and it's quiet, um, me and my my junior or apprentice, a rich one, we sit and, and we watch YouTube videos. We watch other barbers, and I come across this one barber the other day, 
Um, and I've got to give him a shout out, even though um, I haven't really seen all of his work, but his line outs are by far amazing. And uh, Richmond, what was his name? 360 Juzi. Yeah, 360 Juzi. Absolutely, his line outs. I've, I've only seen a couple of his haircuts. Um, I know he does a lot of afro work. Um, but his lining out by far, I was like, oh my god, so, so sharp, such a talented guy. So yeah, 360 and GG, if you ever watch my videos, I just want to say a big shout out to you, you're awesome. So guys, I stuck a hoodie on. Reason being is because I wear black in the shop, black is on uniform. Um, but someone commented last time saying, you do the distinction between comb really well, but when you stood behind someone in your last haircut, because it was a black top and it was black hair, couldn't you see what I was doing? So, shout out to Anon, on my boob, for giving me my gym hoodie. It's quite lit. Ha, <laughs> said lit. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is for Jay's haircut on the top, I'm going to club cut it all first. So I'm going to take off about, about an inch with my shark fin shears. By the way, massive, massive shout out to shark fin shears. Um, I've used them for the past year now and I absolutely love them. They are the best scissors out there ever. They are the sharpest scissors out there ever. They're the most comfortable scissors out there ever. Sharkfinshears.com, um, I believe. Or just search up Sharkfinshears on Google. Um, I'm not actually um, with them as a company. I, I don't endorse their products. Well, I do, because they're good. But I'm not paid to endorse them. I just think they're a really good scissor. A really, really good scissor. So I'm just running through the middle first. Going back about a centimeter of time. And then what I'll do is I'll come through the sides. Start with the right side, I'll bring that up, cut that, and I'll sweep that right over so you can completely see the disconnection there. I'll pull it from the left side, cut that like that. So, what I like to do is I like to club cut it all the way through first. I don't know if you can hear that, that's Melody. She's lovely. <laughs> we have a gym dog, um, and she's beautiful. Halo, that's a gym dog now. It's not in my head, I'm trying to think what that was. So, going back over the haircut now. I'll lift that up there slightly. So I'll take up about an inch. Put my scissors just to the left slightly. And I just want to chip into that just to give it that texture. So I'll do that all the way through the haircut. So I'll bring that back up. Bring my scissors to an angle. And I'll point cut that all the way through the hair.
I'm just getting through the hair. You can see how much texture I oh, that's putting in through the hair now. So now I just want to check that all through because I want the fringe to be the main point of this haircut. Like Olivia your ears where really he pushes that more forward when it's dry and styled and textured up. So I want to bring that up, come to just a slight angle, just texturize through the back. I just want to take a little bit of texture through there. I want to keep a lot of the weight because Jay's hair um, is not thick, there's just lots of lots of hair. So if we can keep most of that, that thickness with a lot of texture, it's perfect. So now I have my Andy's full shavers. Just again, because Jay's got quite sensitive skin, especially around the lower neck area. I just very softly shave that across from my D8s. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my full shaver on because if I cut for it around the bottom of his neck, as it's quite soft skin, it's very sensitive. This is my full shavers. I like that. It's me. <laughs> so now we've got the haircut in place. Um, it still looks shabby, and the only reason it looks shabby, it's a very English term, um, shit. It looks shit. <laughs> um, that is a universal term. It's because it's not styled. So I want to wet it down first. This is my favourite part of the haircut: is the styling because. It's like putting on your clothes before you go out to a nightclub, then fresh, that, that fresh feeling of a, a fresh haircut. So I'm gonna get my Johnny's Chop Shop Trigger Happy. I'm gonna get right up the camera on this one. Trigger Happy Texturizing Spray. Trigger Happy Texturizing Spray. Johnny's. Chop chop. <laughs> Look, it's me. So, enough of the sillies. Spray this into the hair first. Now, for anyone who hasn't used sea salt spray before, I'm going to give you a really good example of what it does. So. While I'm massaging into the root, 90% um, of people would be on a holiday, especially to a beach. Now, when you go in the sea and you, you dive in, you get your hair wet. Now, sea salt spray is identical to if you come out of the sea and you go and lay on the beach for half an hour and your hair dries up and it goes like, it goes all crispy. That is what sea salt spray does. But, Barb dry up, and all I do is, because it's not a pump, it's a texturized cut, so I want to blow dry the hair forwards from the back, and then with my Denman white tooth brush, and then with the fringe, I'm going to blow dry that up, but when it's semi dry, so when it's sort of damp as such, I'm then going to 
let get rid of my brush and I'm gonna really ruffle it up just to give it that real good texture throughout. So enjoy the music while I blow dry. Wildcat hair clay from Johnny's Chop Shop. Some of the best clay I've ever used. It's very versatile, you can use it in lots of different haircuts. I'm just gonna use a little bit of my finger, rub it into my hands. Especially for this kind of haircut, you don't wanna just come back on it or just forward on it. You really want to massage that into the hair to get that Giroux look to really push that forwards and then with your fingertips just lift that up nicely Size. So as you can see that fringe is your point where that is where you want everything to stand out from. Everything else is pushed more forward, very soft texture running throughout. And exactly the same again on this side, where it's more soft, disconnected, push more forward and your fringe is your main focal point. So now just to finish off, I'm going to keep the camera out of the way. So, this is all live happening right now. So, let me focus on Jay's face a little bit. Should I get this out? Hang on, where is it? 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 I love this. Guard the face, spray the hair. As Jay says, he's got very sensitive skin. So any product that really goes on it will irritate it. I'm using Johnny's Fix Power Hold Hairspray. Honestly, this stuff is brilliant, mainly I say it's brilliant because it's not a wet hairspray, it's a very dry hairspray for quite dry natural looks. So I'm about to take the camera off the side and I'm going to show you Jay's hair. I'm going to very 360 point of view and I'm going to talk you all the way through this. So you can see the clear disconnections here the sharp edges. Hi Richmond. Richmond's my cameraman. So that is my interpretation of a Giroux haircut. Right guys, that is how to get the Giroux haircut. I really hope you enjoyed my video. If you do, Give me a like, give me a subscribe. I've got a couple of little shout outs I want to give you. Thank you to Johnny's Chop Shops for making your products so brilliant. Um, 
and so easy to use, very simple. Thank you to Andis. Um, Andis, I just got so much to say that I can't really say much. I'm a bit um, speechless. They, they give me my working tools for me to put food on my table for my kids and my wife. Um, and I would be as good as Barbara if I didn't use their products and that is no joke, that is the honest God's truth. Um, I want to say thank you to Sharkfin, their scissors, sharp, amazing. Thank you to Jay for being my model, thank you for Richmond for being my cameraman. Um, he's smiling, bless him behind there. <laughs> um, now Jay again is going to tell you, I'm going to leave it with Jay just for two seconds. And Jay's going to let you know about his products quickly, his new clothing range. So Jay, if you let them know what, what kind of clothes you've got out. So we're an independent streetwear company. Just released five new t-shirts and two new hats. We've got gym materials and a long sleeve. And we hope you guys will like it. If you want to check it out, www.maskmenswear.com. Mask is spelled M-A-S-Q-U-E, just by the way. Thank you very much for, for watching the video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please give me a subscribe. I'm going to try and put a subscribe button here somewhere, if not, it is just down there. Thanks guys. P.S. Jay's about to do a DIY video on how to do his actual own hair. So from a barber's privilege, you get to see the way I do Jay's hair. Now if you switch over to Johnny's Chop Shop in the description below, there will be an in-depth video of Jay actually doing his own hair to show you how easy it is done. Thanks guys, check out the link below.